Okay, so this is uh, a simulation I built to talk about, to look at what it takes to detect bounces off of multiple emitters and detectors. Um, so what this is simulating is kind of a simplified version. So this guy here is an infrared emitter, and these are two infrared detectors. Um, and light is coming from the emitter and hitting my mouse, and then coming back down, in this case, to detector one. Here's the same things for detector two. Uh, and what the colors represent are, those are isoclines. So everywhere that has the same color uh, is getting the same value, no matter where, like in, anywhere in this, this scene. Um, so uh, this, uh, so it, for example, if, it's, if my mouse is here, it could also get the exact same reading anywhere in this entire isocline. One thing you'll notice as it gets further and further away is those isoclines become wider, which means you have to have better and better precision to get one, get one single position. Um, so now it's showing the isocline for my specific mouse position. Um, and you can see as I move this around, you can see these are all the possible values. These are all the possible positions that have the same brightness reading at this detector. Um, and again, for detector two, same thing. Um, uh, these are all the possible positions that have the same brightness reading. Uh, now, uh, if we want to detect, what, we're, what we want to look at is we say, okay, uh, let's look at where um, I have, I'm in an isocline for detector two and an isocline for detector one. So you look at where the, uh, you look at where those isoclines overlap. And that's where uh, this comes from. Uh, and then when you, when you talk about that, you talk about that with a certain tolerance. You say, uh, a, the tolerance decides how broad the isocline is. So if I tighten up that tolerance, um, then my location becomes smaller and smaller. That decides the precision of my location. Um, what you'll notice is the further you go, um, and this is because this is really a question of a, it's a factor of a square root. So if you think about the brightness of light that my mouse sees coming from the emitter, that's an inverse squared. So uh, it's a constant divided by this distance squared. And the brightness that this guy sees as determined from coming scattered back off my mouse is also an inverse squared based on this distance. So as I go further and further, um, those numbers become very, very close together. Um, and it become very, very small. So it's easy to be within a certain tolerance. As you get closer, those numbers are bigger, but it's easy to be outside of that tolerance. It's easy to find the specific, specific value. Um, so what does that mean for us? Well, really what it's saying is uh, that we have to pick, one, what our range is, and two, we have to set a tolerance for that range where we have a certain small range of positions. If it works out there, it's going to work just fine down here. Um, and so we have to pick where we want to reduce that range down to just one uh, or a certain small radius of positions. Um, and whatever that is, so the, and what you should also see here, so this value here is the tolerance, um, which is, uh, and these numbers don't mean that much because these are just based on pixel values. But the point is, as you get further and further away, that tolerance because becomes increasingly tight. Um, what that means as we make a circuit is that we're going to have to have better sensing, higher uh, precision reading of our photo detectors, and, uh, that, and also better repeatability. Um, because really, if we want to just pull out just one spot, we have to be able to get the same values over and over and over again from the photo detectors um, and see how that looks. Uh, so anyway, this is like the rough simulation. Um, it, totally works. I mean, these are, uh, even if you took all of these values and averaged them together, uh, that's another way to kind of build a lookup table and guess where you could, where you could be on that isocline. 
Um, uh, so this is, again, the first crack at the math. One additional thing that we're going to have to, to add to the math here is this is treating the emitter and the detector like it's an isotropic emitter and an isotropic detector, meaning it emits the same direction, like the same amount in all possible directions. And the detector has the same sensitivity in all possible directions. Uh, but we know that's not true. So uh, when we have our actual LED emitters and detectors, like these guys, um, these have a way better emissivity and sensitivity going straight out, and it's kind of like a lobe. Uh, so they get worse and worse coming in as you go closer to 90 degrees. Um, and we really don't care what happens below the sensor. We really only care about what happens above it. Um, uh, but we're, if we want to build a very good model, we have to add, we have to find the detector that has that characterized. We have to work that into the equation. Um, and we can actually use that to our advantage. That helps narrow down our isoclines. So that's the, the first crack at math. And the uh, next question is, let's actually build it and run, that, run those numbers as we, as we get it from a real system.